Michael, thank you very much. So the Bills lead at 17 7 at the half. Uh, nobody does circle the wagon like the <laughs> Buffalo Bills. Tom Jackson is with me. Tommy, we're watching two quarterbacks, and at least it's an exciting game. Well, a couple of mistakes made by both Flutie and Burline toward the end of the half in the form of interceptions. But the thing that you see from both of these quarterbacks, they bring a certain enthusiasm to their offensive football teams. And even though both are it replacing other quarterbacks, Burline permanently in the case of Kerry Collins and, and Flutie temporarily in the in the case of Rob Johnson, I think that that's the most exciting part of this game is watching these two offenses respond to these two quarterbacks. You're right. You're always big on watching tempo. That's right. Tempo, real quick. Tempo is good. Better for the Bills thus far with a 10-point uh, lead. Well, going into week number eight, only two teams undefeated. The Denver Broncos will have their game against Jacksonville in a moment. And the Minnesota Vikings, at 6-0, and trying to roll on. But would they win at Detroit? Remember, Detroit had upset Green Bay there just 10 days ago. Barry Sanders, the moves you've known for a decade. 130, 127 yards, and Detroit led 13-10 at the half. For Randall Cunningham to Chris Carter. All he does, catch touchdowns. Vikings lead 20-13. to And they have so many weapons. 134 yards rushing for Robert Smith. Watch him take Mark Carrier and abuse him. The Vikings roll 34-13. to Big game atop the AFC East. Patriots, Dolphins, 9-9. First series overtime, Miami with the toss. On third down, they fought the law. The law didn't win. Tie law, pass interference. Two plays later, Dan Marino, O.J. McDuffie, 25-yard game. So they bring out Olindo Mari. Whoa! His fourth field goal, 43 are good. Dolphins in first place. They win it 12-9. Falcons and Jets, boom! Victor Green with the truck that hit Steve DeBerg. Jerome Henderson, 53-yard touchdown. The Jets lead it 14 to nothing. Vinny Testaverde. To Keyshawn Johnson, J-E-T-S-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-T-
Welcome back to halftime. The Bills lead the Panthers 17 to 7. It was almost undefeated against undefeated, but Doug Flutie and the Bills upset Jacksonville last week. But still, 5 and 1 Jacksonville at 6 and 0 Denver. The game of the day in the NFL. And the Broncos know that two years ago they were upset at home in the playoffs by these Jacksonville Jaguars. Terrell Davis would be a record setting day for him. Well, John Elway to Easy Ed McCaffrey. And McCaffrey was great today, Tom, before he got hurt. 10 to 3 Broncos. Now, this is what we're talking about. We showed you Tom Dempsey for a reason. Four seconds to go. Jason Elam, four seconds left in the half from 63 yards. Man, he just split it. Jason Elam from Hawaii. 27 to 10, the Broncos at the half. Fourth quarter, Terrell Davis, and look at what he does. Well, one of their favorite plays, the slant off tackle. You see Terrell, great balance as he gets it into the end zone. And then Terrell needing five yards to reach 1,000 yards within seven games. He would end up getting that to join Jim Brown, who did it once, and O.J. Simpson, who did it twice. The only other guys to get 1,000 yards in seven games. The Broncos have been 6-0 four times, including the last two years, but they had never been 7-0 until now when they beat the Jaguars 37-24. to And this is a team that... Well, if you stop one thing, you've got to contend with something else, and they're very balanced, maybe more well, than some of them. Well, uh, that, that's the key, balanced to the point, I think, where you have a Terrell Davis, who quite possibly may be the best rusher in football right now, at least the best positive rusher in football. But you look at the numbers, 170 yards rushing, almost 300 yards passing, 465 yards against a Jacksonville defense that I think is much improved over the defense that they had last year. And I think the important thing is we've watched this season go on. The Denver Broncos now gets the New England Patriots, who was going to be, quote, unquote, one of their main competitors against Jacksonville. When they got them in Mile High Stadium, they dispatched them pretty easily. So the key is home field advantage. They've now separated themselves from the rest of the conference by two games. Right. If they can force you to come to Mile High Stadium to play, very difficult time getting out of there with a win. The Vikings maintain their two-game lead in their division over the Packers. They, too, are similar in, in, in so many weapons, although neither team has a dominating defense, but they haven't needed it yet. Well, they haven't needed it. They don't allow those defenses to be exposed. And we talk about home field advantage for the Denver Broncos. I think that that's what Minnesota now has to do. They beat their main competitor, the defending NFC champion, Green Bay Packers, at Lambeau Field. A lot of teams like going to a dome in mid-December. It's harder for them to get that home home field advantage. So I think they now have to establish that dome in Minnesota as a place that you don't want to come and play football. Well, they've established themselves pretty well. They're both 7-0. Yes. and oh. One other uh, event in the world of sports we want to update you on. Rain uh, well washed out the finish of the race in Phoenix. Rusty Wallace wins the Duraloop Kmart 500. And uh, that means that Jeff Gordon hasn't clinched it yet, but he's all but clinched his third Winston Cup championship after the results on this day. Hey, Doug Flutie, he's so good he can turn interceptions into touchdowns. Water into wine. Bills lead 17-7 at the half. How important the family unit is, that's why we help. Children today face many difficult problems. That's why here in Buffalo, United Way has changed the way we help, from the students to the parents and the whole family. These programs are leading the way for a new, innovative approach to change the way we serve the family and build better communities for all of us. The NFL, the United Way, and you, the power of teamwork. Welcome back to Charlotte, North Carolina. The Buffalo Bills going for their fourth win in a row and a second place tie in the AFC East, leading the Panthers 17 to 7 at the end of the first half. Carolina will get the football to start the third quarter. Christie to kick to Bates. Led the league in kickoff returns two years in a row. Takes this one at the one. And Buffalo did a great job of covering that kick. Hill shielded the outside, and Mark Pike, the special teams demon, in on another tackle. First half stats, a nice advantage for Buffalo, 239 to 162. 
and the time of possession Carolina actually leading in that category they have one of the worst time of possession records in the NFL it's in fact their 30th at 25 minutes and a shade over Lane pounds it out to the 25. You know, I said before the before the game that Brockmar had to block Smith, but I, I'll tell you, Carolina has used everybody on Bruce Smith, in, including a wide receiver. Ishmael, watch this. Watch the guys that block Bruce. 81, that's Ishmael. He gets a block. There's Brockmar, number 78 on Bruce Smith. Bruce makes a great, great play going down the line. Now here's Brockmar again with Garcia. Now, Walsh blocks Bruce Smith. So they're going to let everybody block him. Line to Walls. Wesley Walls cast on his hand and all makes another catch. His third up to the 31, maybe the 32 yard line. Holosek was on him. And Walls comes up Olympic. Sam Rogers is out for Buffalo. The left outside linebacker has a pulled hamstring. He will not return. Walls limps off. Luther Broughton comes in at tight end. And they can ill afford to lose Wesley Walls. Here comes the blitz, and Fred Lane wrapped up by Brandenburg. Let's go to Solomon Wilcox. Yeah, Mike, I talked to Dom Capers at halftime. Felt like his secondary just gave up too many big plays in that first half. Felt like the defense is doing a good job of containing Doug Flutie. He says that his cornerback, Doug Evans, should have made the interception in the end zone. And you know what, Mike? He didn't use the Cavs as an excuse. He wants Doug Evans to make those plays. Well, it is an excuse. See, you know how an outstanding corner that Doug Evans is. And it's got to be extremely frustrating to him. Burline off his back foot, throws behind Broughton and Jones in coverage. And there's a flag back. It looks like it's going to be roughing the First passer. Foul. Roughing the passer. Number nine in the defense. Joe 15 Hansen. yards, automatic first down. I know that you I know that there's a sensitivity to it in the league but they really got to take a look at that I mean they are penalizing defenders for just playing football Berline steps up Hanson does this now oh no how is he just he just grabs him he doesn't he, you know it's his shoulder in the chest not his head that's that I'm is sorry. a terrible call I'm sorry I mean they just you know, they've gone so far to protect the quarterbacks, and I certainly understand it, but you've got to let these guys play football. Look how close Hansen is when he's releasing the ball. He can't pull up. He's right in the middle of a tackle. That's that, but the problem is he drove him into the ground, and that's what they see. Ismael on the end of the round. And Gabe Northern made the play on defense. I, I, I agree. I don't agree with, the, with, with, with what they're saying, but I'm telling you right now, Phil Hansen, it's not the hit because he doesn't hit him with the helmet, but watch him drive him into the ground. He takes a couple of steps with Berline. That's what they're seeing. Paul, he was a half step away. You have a legitimate right to hit the quarterback. That is the motion he was carrying. You can't pull off. He's, he's got a body lean of 45 degrees when he hits the guy. That's impossible for a defensive lineman to do. Berline gets this one out to Muhammad again, and he is into Buffalo territory at the 46. That time, Bruce Smith buried Steve Berline. He's getting better acquainted with each of the defensive linemen for the Buffalo Bills at this point. Now they're stunning Bruce Smith. They got to find a way to get him free because he's getting blocked. Look at this. They go outside. He comes up inside. He's on Burline. Now he hits him. It's the same play. I'm, I'm, I wasn't agreeing with what the official said. It's the exact same play we just saw a moment ago with Phil Hansen. Neither one of them should be called. third and three throws back across the green and Mohammed can't come up with this one that may have been intended for Broughton well Steve Berline only looked at two of his receivers his third receiver is the slot man hooking back on the left side his progression should be the tight end the back to the right then he should come back to a back hooking on the left 
He only looked at two of the receivers that time and then was forced to flush himself out of the pocket. Kevin Williams will go back to his 10 yard line for Ken Walters punt. Another beautiful high floater. And they'll down this one. That ball will be marked back close to the 10 yard line where it was first touched. A good job by Walter to get it high and kill it deep in their territory. It's an idea that's. 15 7, 11, 12 to go, third quarter. Flutie and company take over at the 10. Antoine Smith cut down in the backfield. Doug Flutie has done so many different things in the first half of this football game. Different ways of delivering the ball. There's a little push pass. Then you bounce one up in the air for a touchdown. Then you make a perfectly thrown corner route. He's thrown every throw you can make except here where he tries to force the play and throws the interception. Trying to do almost a little too much at times, but gosh, he's fun to watch. Flutie, Sam Gash. Should have a first down just across the 20 where Tony Velan made the tackle. We talked about the throwing lanes that are essential for every quarterback, and in particular for Doug Flutie. When you take a look at his pass chart, you'll see Doug Evans lives over here, so he's thrown a lot there. And you see the four balls that he's thrown over here. Nothing down the middle of the football field. That is what the offensive line is allowing Doug Flutie to do. Smith protecting the ball stops short of the 25 Sean Gilbert from his right defensive end spot. You know you talked about when Bruce Smith was on defense early part of the game we didn't hear his name an awful lot. There's a guy on Carolina's defense who we haven't talked about a lot that's Michael Barrow. He is the man that plays that weak side linebacker position and has really got to get involved in stopping the runs if they're going to be effective controlling Buffalo's offense. They'll say the ball is down. Now, Kevin Green made that tackle. He had an interception earlier. The reason he hasn't gotten a sack or even close yet, they've been double teaming him. Well, when you say a guy gets a lot of sacks like Kevin Green, he can also play the run. Watch this. He gets away from Sam Gash. He moves up inside and makes the tackle on Smith. You know, that ball comes down, and Smith is on top of Kevin Green. And they say when you're down, the ball, you can't have a fumble if your knee hits the ground but on that play it just looked like he was on top of Kevin Green when he fumbled Antoine Smith the injured player will check on him and six for Buffalo Thurman Thomas into the injured Antoine Smith here comes the blitz floating first down <laughs> and a flag is down at the end of the play they're gonna call roughing I believe you see Jerry Ostrowski go over there and protect the, his quarterback. Look at Doug, he's smiling. Well, I'll tell you, you talked about Michael Burrow has to make some plays. He went down like a rock. Personal foul. Number 92 of the defense. 15 yards for unnecessary roughness. First down. That's Tarek Sala, a backup linebacker. But well, on this play here with food, yeah, first of all, it goes inside of Kevin Green and Michael Barrow on, on you'll see him number 56. Watch this, Flutie. He just takes off run. Here's Michael Barrow on the top of the screen. Look at him. He cuts back inside of him. He's on the ground. I don't know about Boy, that one either. You know, that is that's a terrible call. Hey, that's, a, that's a tough way to lose 15 yards. Thurman Thomas gets about three.
And another flag. Monday night countdown tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Join Mike Tirico, Tom Jackson, and Sterling Sharp for the latest word around the league. Then at 8 on ABC, it's Monday Night Football. Cordell Stewart and the Steelers battle Andre Rison and the Chiefs. This was the same kind of play, the same kind of aftermath in the tackle, and they threw the flag again, and now they're talking about it. I don't believe it was the tackle that got the flag this time. You had Jay Reesmer, the tight end involved in this one. foul on the play. Second half. The flag was thrown, but both players were pushing and shoving, and there is no foul. Second That's right. Half. It was Jay Reesmer's mud down the field. They were pushing and shoving. They threw a flag, and then they picked it up. Watch number 85 and Greg Lloyd go at it. Now, there you see a punch. Let me tell you something. The officials, in my opinion, are right now losing control of this football game. They're throwing flags that should be called and picking them up and throwing flags that shouldn't be called and assessing them. I think you're absolutely right. Flutie, another naked boot. Reimersma to the 40. He'll be shy of the first down. The things that Doug Flutie does to help an offense are just continual. When you have the ability like Flutie does to make play fake like that and get around the outside, it forces not only Lloyd, but the tackles in the inside linebackers to stay home. If you don't, he winds up with a simple completion. And all this is going to do is help out the running game. Sure, it's just nine yards, but now the linebackers have to stay home and respect the fakes. Flutie, 11 out of 14, 202 yards passing tonight. The quick out complete to Reed. He'll pick up a couple. Flutie has gone over the 200-yard mark for the third time in a row in his previous starts, in his previous NFL incarnation before he was exiled to the CFL, he never had a 200-yard passing game. Let me just say, being exiled to the CFL, being exiled someplace <laughs> means you went someplace bad. The CFL is not a bad place to go. He was ex exiled by the league up there, right? It snows up there all the time. <laughs> he was exiled. It does in Buffalo, too, Michael. <laughs> not at this time of the year, does it? Thurman, a flag is down. Dusty Ziegler, number 61, the center is holding. Holding, number 61 of the offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. And while he was north of the border, all he did was throw for 41,000 plus. It's not a misprint. 270, count them, touchdown passes. He ran for 70 more. See, that's not exile. <laughs> he wouldn't have anybody to play with. Six MVP titles, and he probably raised wolves during the offseason. <laughs> yeah, but they only had three titles of CFL title. First and 20 after the holding call. Screen. Thurman Thomas, beautiful diagnosis by Jason Peter, the rookie. Oh, Jason Peter plays this thing so perfectly, and, and if Thurman Thomas gets away from him, he's got at least the first down. But Jason Peter reads the screen, gets back outside, and makes the tackle on Thurman Thomas. This defense suffered. There's Antoine Smith. He looks like he'll be able to play. This defense for Carolina has played very very well they have had so many injuries Jason Peter missed all of training camp Chuck Wiley was going to be the defensive end he got hurt Flirty in trouble and throws incomplete what a job by John Fina he said you're not going down let me help I tell you, who makes Flutie pull, this thing, Flutie pull this thing down and go the other way was Kevin Green because he faked the blitz and goes back to the outside. Now Flutie comes over here and watch John Fina. Now, now you're not going down yet. You got some work to do yet. Let's get him back on his feet and 
<laughs> throw the ball. That's beautiful. Slams the brakes on Alexander, misses him. Fina helps him up. And then he has the presence of mind to avoid the sack by throwing the ball away. After almost every play, someone in Buffalo's huddle is smiling. Flutie, a completion to the 30. Got it to Kevin Williams. They need to reach the 25 for a first down, so they'll go for the field goal. But still, the completion of that yardage allows Wade Phillips' football team to at least have a shot at a field goal. Doug Flutie just continues to perform magic after magic. He really takes bad plays and makes them very livable, if not spectacular. Steve Christie from 47. And he got it. Back to Charlotte after this. Line explosion. Yeah. Either he's dissatisfied with the team or it's the cheapest Halloween outfit ever. Well, I saw him with the bag off. And if I were him, I'd keep the bag on. <laughs> <laughs> Christie to kick it away with the Bills leading 20 to 7. Oliver and Bates are deep. Bates from the 10. Bates got it to the 34 yard line. Timeout on the field, 4-17 to go third quarter, a 13 point Buffalo lead. Hi, I'm Tom Neff, President of Nothing Science. Booty flushed. Throws it down. Caught by Boston College. I don't believe it. Oh, it's a touchdown. 20 to 7. Bills over the Panthers. 417 to go third quarter. Jerry Richardson, the owner of the Carolina Panthers. Berline throws short and incomplete. ESPN Sunday Night Football is brought to you by Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. It's everywhere you want to be. By Sprint for all the ways you communicate. And by Applebee's, America's favorite neighbor. You belong to Applebee's. Steve Berline has only hit three of his last eight passes. Fred Lane. Good, tough run by Fred Lane, and he'll have the first down. Boy, we would talk about Blake Brockemeyer blocking on Bruce Smith, 78 on 78, and this has been going on all night, folks. Watch this block. Take Bruce Smith to the outside. Lane goes back to the inside. That is an attitude for an offensive line. Now they're blocking. And they were not sure until just a few minutes before kickoff whether Brockemeyer would be able to go with a knee injury. Lane again. Crosses the 45 to the 47 where Ted Washington dragged him down. I think Carolina has established the fact that they can run the football now. I think they can utilize that in their passing game. It's an excellent way to pass protect the play action faking. Give Burline an opportunity now to try and eat up some yards. You're down by 13 points. You're going to have to get some points on the board sooner or later. And grinding it out on the ground isn't going to get it done with a little over a quarter left. Second and eight for the Panthers. Burline short set. Muhammad makes the catch. He'll be a yard and a half shy of the first down, drilled by Manny Martin, who was a big hitter at free safety. Carolina offense has got to take some shots down the field. I, the, I know it's a West Coast offense and it's a short passing game. I still believe that you have to throw the ball down the field. Gil Haskell has been brought in here to improve the passing game, which he has. But you still have to try and do it because referees are going to call interference almost 90% of the time. They've had they, one pass tonight over 15 yards. And they certainly have the speed on the outside. Third and short for Burlock. 
trying to run for it. He needed to reach the 45-yard line. Sam Coward brought him down. It will totally depend on where the referee spots the ball. And it's a loose ball. Buffalo has it. And now a flag comes down. Burline tries to work himself up for the first down. The ball gets stripped out. That's a heck of a call. And here come the Bills. They have a personal foul, number 67 of the offensive team. 15 yards, first down Buffalo. Brian Stoltenberg, the starting center. It looked like Bruce Smith took the ball away from Burline on the way down. Tonight's headlines, the Falcons, Steve DeBerg at 44, becomes the oldest NFL player to start a game since 1925. Jerry Rice with another NFL record in his pocket, 184 straight. And Jason Elam, a 63-yard field goal to tie Tom Dempsey's long-standing record. That was amazing. All I can say is I haven't been very fortunate in my life because I've been able to see both of them, Tom Dempsey's 63-yard and the one Jason Elam hit today. And he could have, it could have been 66. The other thing is, too, is Wade Phillips is going to have a decision coming up regarding Doug Flutie or, Rob, Flutie or Rob Johnson. I don't really think it's going to be much of a decision. Doug Flutie has done a great job keeping this team going. When Rob Johnson is ready to play, he will be the quarterback of the Buffalo Bills. As Thurman Thomas says, who did you pay $25 million to? He's going to be the starter. Flutie under pressure. Thurman Thomas. He's amazing. Oh, the fake. First of all, there was a fake to Thurman Thomas. Then he hits Kevin Green and knocks him off stride. And then he catches the ball. So Thurman Do Thomas does three things. One, watch him to the right, 34. The fake to him, bam, he'll hit Kevin Green. Knocks him inside. Now watch. Flutie gets away from Kevin Green. And Thurman Thomas goes downfield and gets open. That's experience. Those are veteran plays. Thomas thriving in this third down back scenario. <laughs> Sam Gash, the fullback. Joe, back to your point about Johnson. I think the most pressure is going to be on Rob Johnson because he's the guy that's got to follow all this fanfare about Doug Flutie. I don't think anyone disagrees. Rob Johnson is a very good quarterback. He has a chance to be a terrific quarterback. But that's a tough situation to be in. Well, it's not tough right now for Wade Phillips, to be perfectly honest with you, Mike. You're absolutely right. If Rob Johnson doesn't play well and Flutie yes. continues to, through this game and next week if he's not ready to play well and then Rob struggles, then you're going to have the questions come up. Right now, they've got a perfect scenario. Second and nine. Thurman. Thurman Thomas. Touchdown. <laughs> because Antoine Smith has the sprained ankle. Thurman Thomas stays in on all downs and rips off a touchdown run. Joe Panos. What, look at the blocking here. Here's Remus by kicking out. Fina gets a good block. Panos gets an excellent block. Here he comes around number 72. Watch Thurman just break this tackle of Doug Evans. The extra point is good. And Thurman Thomas now being used as a third down back for the most part may extend his career for a long time. Thurman Thomas still showing he has a lot of power as he breaks through. Tony Velan, number 36, is going to slice across and try and make the tackle. And he just manages to step out and get it through. Doug Evans just continues to have problems with his hand. Here comes Moles trying to block him. Now, Evans is going to try and get away. But he really can't because he can only use the one hand. Wade Phillips, who saw this season start so badly with three consecutive losses, games that they were in and did not win, 
And the Carolina Panthers have seen this before. Their fans looking right down the barrel of 0-7 are leaving Erickson Stadium. You know, when you see Wade Phillips walking on the sidelines without a headset, when they were 0-3, that was one of the things that people griped about. Why doesn't he have a headset on? <laughs> Why isn't he in the game? Jerry Richardson, another solemn evening for him. He put a lot of money into free agent signings this year and hasn't seen much of a return for it. Bates from the five. Got to the outside. Knocked out at the 32. ESPN Sunday Night Football continues next week with a major battle in the AFC West. Tim Brown and the Raiders head to Seattle to take on Ricky Waters and the Seahawks. Join Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, and me right after prime time at 8.15 Eastern. There's a fan who's not leaving. <laughs> That wasn't a sculpture either. He was real. Her line throws incomplete on first down with only 20. That's an ugly looking sculpture. How do you know he's real? I saw him move earlier. Well, he's not move. He hasn't moved. That could be like a, a new thing on that telex sign. <laughs> it could be like an addition. Like, let us hop all over your work. We can get it done. I'll tell you, I'd find, like that. I'd find a more comfortable home than sitting on it. Maybe it's a good view of the game. Second and 10 with 24 seconds to go third quarter. Lane on the sweep behind Floyd. Floyd got a good block and Lane is out of bounds. The frustration continuing to build for the Carolina Panthers because they have been so close and Dom Capers finds that first win so elusive. And Dom Capers talked about the character of his football team and said, hey, look, I like this football team. They've hung together. They really have. This is the second game of the year that they really have had trouble staying in the game. They've given up a lot of big plays in this game, but still, the Panthers hang tough. That's the end of the third quarter. The Bills have built their lead to 20. Make. There's an old Kerry Collins jersey on the wall here at Erickson Stadium, and he certainly caused a controversy here when he went into Dom Capers' office, and according to Dom Capers, and then the quarterbacks who he met with afterwards said his heart wasn't in it, and asked out of the lineup, it led to his very rapid release, and really, Dom Capers and the Panthers had no other choice. You have someone that asks out of the lineup, especially the quarterback and the leader, you can't keep him on the ball club. Burline in trouble. Hanson. Boy, did you see Hanson take him down ever so gently? Well, this is the type of situation you get into from a quarterback where now you know that the defensive line is going to tee off. You just can't hold the ball a long time. And the other thing is, is they're going to drop seven people back. They're just rushing four. Everybody is covered. There isn't a place for Steve to go with the football. The Rockets all covered up. Got nowhere to go over there. Jackson's all over him. This is a good defense for the Buffalo Bills. Walter the punt to Williams. Walter does a great job of hanging those so high. Williams fair catch at the 15. A 48-yard punt with no return. 14-21 to go in the game. Flutie and company up big. Our keynote speaker holds a Ph.D. in ESPN Sunday Night Football is brought to you by Midas for quality service. Visit your neighborhood Midas today. By Courtyard by Marriott, the hotel designed by business travelers. By AT&T, it's all within your reach. And by Saturn, a different kind of company, a different kind of car. And this is a different Buffalo Bills football team from September to October. Thurman Thomas. Doug Flutie 
for three weeks in a row has thrown for career highs. Tonight, 245 yards. And the rating, 131.9. That is almost off the scale. Well, you know, the one thing about this Buffalo Bill team, and I happen to live in Buffalo, Joe, is that they've, they've been bad mouth in the offensive line since day one. And this offensive line, as of four weeks ago, put it all together. Flutie completes it to Lonnie Johnson up to the 35-yard line. Play action provides you with such opportunities to be able to suck the linebackers up to the line of scrimmage, and it creates an automatic passing lane. Gash goes through. He turns inside. Lonnie Johnson is right outside so that there's a perfect place for Doug Flutie to be able to make the release and throw the ball into. Here's a look from Doug's side. What? What's wrong with that? You could be five foot one and make that. <laughs> All he's done is 16 out of 20 for 262 yards. Thurman hit at the line. Richardson came flying up from the safety spot. Well, you look at this. Look, look, look at what happens when, when the Flutie's in there with the offensive line. Gets sacked once every 30-plus dropbacks. And Johnson gets sacked almost one every five. And see, Rob Johnson is a mobile quarterback. Yes, People he don't is. understand. He played a lot earlier in the year when this offensive line was trying to come together. And I think he'll be a beneficiary of it when he comes back. Jonathan Linton is the new tailback, number 35. Flag is down the pass complete to Quinn early. We'll check the penalty. But in all fairness, Rob Johnson on those sacks. I'll get to it in a second. Pass interference. Number 25 to the defense. Automatic first down. Derek Davis. Almost half of those sacks, Joe, was when Rob Johnson ran out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage, which is called a sack. Which his offensive line really doesn't appreciate. <laughs> no, they do not. They would prefer he throw it away somewhere. I mean, they give you that opportunity to throw it away, so you don't want to be running out of bounds behind the line, because the line don't appreciate that. First and ten on the penalty. And Alexander forces him out of bounds. Let's go to Solomon Wilcott. Solomon? Yeah, Mike, the latest marketing tool to ride the wave of Flutie mania has been the sale of Flutie Flakes. They sold nearly 50,000 boxes over the course of a two-week span. One store sold out its entire stock in one day. The product has become so popular they put a limit to one box per customer. Now the proceeds will go to benefit the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for Autism. His son was born with autism three years ago. He and his wife, Lori, well, it's been a fight for them to really sell this product, but they've done really well. And at Bristol University, that's what we have three meals a day. Flutie, shot puts this one out, complete. Sam Gash will have another first down. This is the rolling left version of the jump pass. We've now added one other little element to the Doug Flutie highlight package, which by the time he's done, we'll have uh, an hour special on what Doug Flutie can and cannot do. Here comes the bootleg again. Look at the linebacker's flow. Now watch this. Little jump in the air, flick the ball out, and make it happen. He has been able to take his physical size and make it work for him for such a long, long period of time. Both in Chicago and New England before, he was stuck in Neanderthal offenses. This one takes advantages of his ability to move around. Litton getting some rare work. Got down to the 46. Now, Paul, having been a longtime Buffalo resident, the fans are, even though they may not understand the football aspect of it, putting Rob Johnson back in as the quarterback, emotionally, they are attached to Doug Flutie. What's going to happen? Well, I think, I think Flutie has sold it to the fans. Because Flutie, everything he's ever said to the fans is, 
I am the backup quarterback. So he's really trying not to cause a controversy. Obviously, the fans want to see this guy play. But if you look at Rob Johnson's numbers, he's a 63% passer. Right. So, I mean, it's not that you've you got a bad guy going in there. And it's not a dissimilar situation to what they have in Minnesota. Randall Cunningham has been absolutely spectacular. But again, Dennis Green has made the statement up there. When Brad Johnson is healthy, he's going to go back in and play. And i got to believe that both for Dennis Green up in Minnesota and for Wade Phillips in Buffalo, it's got to be an economic decision as well. And for both, you're talking quarterback of the future, not just the present. Right. Coming up next, Sports Center, Dan Patrick and Kenny Mayne will get you caught up on the day in sports. The top stories, of course, the NFL highlights. Terrell Davis over 1,000 yards. What a remarkable achievement. And Jason Elam crushes a 63-yard field goal for a record. Followed by NFL primetime, Chris Berman, Tom Jackson with all the highlights of all the day's games. Buffalo working on a time-consuming drive here in the fourth quarter. Listen. 40, 35, 25. Had Brent Alexander as a passenger for the last 15. Well, Jonathan Linton has been hurt for a few weeks, and they really, really liked him. And, but when you give this guy a hole, Jamie Nails... Number 74 for the Buffalo Bills is going to get a block. Jamie Nails is a whole offensive line by himself, but he gets a great block on Jeff Brady and opens a hole for Jonathan Lynn. Jamie Nails is a healthy rookie, 6'6", 354. Probably isn't done growing. Linton again. And with this win, the Buffalo Bills, who many thought were dead at 0-3, are going to tie for second place in the AFC East, and they get Miami at home next week, a chance to tie for first. Well, Ralph Wilson's football team over the next five weeks plays all divisional opponents. They're going to wind up playing in the AFC East for the next month. So a lot of what this team is going to be able to do will be determined in the month of November. Second and nine. And they'll whistle this play dead. Art, number 84, five yards. It's still second down. Joe, here was what you pointed out. They'll have three of the five at home, five consecutive divisional opponents and it's not please. easy now, it's never easy but you know I've found that they're gonna play New England twice within three weeks I have found as a player preparing for games like that it's easier because I mean you're familiar with everybody you've seen everybody it makes it a little easier on the coaches to prepare everybody and you know these are teams that this football team has seen a lot of this drive has already eaten up 613 off the fourth quarter clock this is exactly what they wanted. Nice move by the Linton to cut it outside. And gets down near the 26-yard line. Well, you're watching an offensive line at work. And Ruben Brown came in yesterday to talk to us. And we asked him, you know, what has made the biggest difference in this offensive line? Why have you guys finally turned this thing around? Carl Mock. Yep. He's talking about the offensive line coach. He said, Carl Mock taught us how to look at game films how to prepare for a game, how to study, how to get yourself mentally ready. And also, when you look at the, the years of experience, you know, Fina's at seven years, Brown's at four, Ziegler's at three, Panos is at five, Ostrowski's at five. This is a team that has a chance to grow together, like the former Buffalo Bill offensive line in the championship years. Third and ten, they'll give it to Linton. The flag is down as Barrow makes the tackle at the 22. And this will come back on a holding call. Holding, holding number 85 of the offense. 10 yards. Repeat third down. Reimersman, the tight end from Michigan. That's what being undefeated in the month of October will do for you. You know, the thing about it is when you talk to these guys, each one of those guys came in yesterday and you talked to them, including Flutie. 
they know they can win. You know, they went 0 and 3, and and people talked about them. They can't win a football game. They can't do this. They can't do that. Except the guys that didn't believe it were the guys that are on the field. They're the only ones that matter. That's right. Do believe in it. You saw Antoine Smith on the sideline. We are told he is fine. They just didn't need him to come back in the ball game, and that's wonderful news for Buffalo. Three to Quinn early at the 26-yard line. So bring up a fourth and long. But again, Flutie makes a throw yep. to get him in field goal position. He, he has such total command and understanding of the game of football. Through this entire drive, he's bled the 40 and the 25 second clock down to one every time he snapped the ball. Christie has already hit from 42 and 47. This is 44. And he got it. Christie is good. Christie, three field goals from better than 40 yards, and the count rises to 30 to 7. Cream puff, mama's boy, panty waist. Get into a Ford truck and find out what tough really is. Right now, get the best-selling F-Series for low 1.9 APR financing for up to 36 months. Or enjoy some thrills in Ranger with low 0.9 APR financing for up to 48 months. Plus, that's right, plus $1,000 cash back. Come into your local Ford dealer and get into the only trucks built Ford tough. We make big bank checking, little bank smart. One tiny fee. These overhead shots provided by the Southwest Airlines Aerial Cam, high above Erickson Stadium for ESPN's Sunday Night Football, where it's the Bills over the Panthers, 30 to 7. Buffalo now cruising to its fourth consecutive win. Christie to kick off to Bates and Winslow. Bates from the one. Caught and dropped at the 30. Gabe Northern down on special teams. Doug Flutie with another career high passing performance leading the Buffalo Bills. Sunday Night Football. We bring you the Raiders. This time matching up against their AFC West rival, the Seahawks. ESPN Sunday Night Football. Coverage begins at 8.15. Mmm, I gotta watch that game. The bags are out at Carolina, and I can honestly tell you, I hate to see this. This is only the second game they haven't had a chance to win until the end. These guys haven't given up. They're still playing hard. There's plenty of teams in this country that are getting shellacked every week that deserve the bags a lot more than the Carolina Panthers. These guys have really worked hard and tried hard. It just hasn't turned out for them. There's Jerry Richardson. You know how frustrated he's got to be. The gentleman to his left is Lamar Lathan. Of course, you know how frustrated he has to be as well, being gone for the year. Illegal use of hands to the face. Number 78, 10 yards. Repeat first down. That's Brockermeyer, who has had a wonderful game against the future Hall of Famer Bruce Smith. Well, that time Bruce Smith had him beat to the inside, and he had to grab him. Only 5.37 to go in the ball game. It is all Buffalo. The Panthers are falling to 0-7. Carrier with the catch over the middle up to the 40. And gang tackled there as they try to strip the ball away. You know, people wonder why would the why would Bruce Smith still be on a field when a game is basically decided like this? Because he wants to go after sacks. This is when you can put some sacks up for yourself. Not only Bruce, but the entire starting defensive line. Burline hangs in the pocket. Anthony Johnson gets to do about the 48 as they, they are in the hurry up. Ray Jackson with the tackle. Speaking of never giving up, Kevin Green hasn't and won't. And his teammates haven't either. Burline hit from behind by Smith. Loose ball. Bruce Smith has it. And there's a penalty flag down as well. Why did you hit this baby on the head? That's <laughs> you why, know, he's now you know why he's in there. 
I mean, Brockemeyer did a great job with Garcia and, and other people in this offensive line on Bruce Smith all night long, and he finally got it. We have two fouls on the play. Well, illegal use of hands to the face. Number 76. We have illegal contact. Number 40 of the defense. Those penalty is offset. Replay second down. And that wipes out the sack. So Bruce Smith, look at him. He's looking. Wait a minute. I had a sack. <laughs> He's mad. Bruce Smith. Look at. They had a deal going on. Garcia steps out. Bruce Smith gets around, knocks the ball away, and recovers it. Now, after that, I don't want to block him on this play. Well, you know who he goes after? He goes after the guy in the secondary who made the illegal contact. Burline with a short set tries to throw to Muhammad and off his fingertips. Thomas Smith with the coverage. ESPN celebrates the most exciting baseball season to date this Friday at 9 Eastern with the Major League Baseball Players' Choice Awards. Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Alex Rodriguez, and David Wells, just a few of the stars expected to be on hand and contend for those awards. Join Chris Berman for all the festivities Friday at 9 Eastern on ESPN. It certainly is a season to celebrate. And they'll whistle this one dead. Brockemeyer, number 78, moves early. All start, number 78, five yards, still third down. You know, for a guy that came in and he's playing hurt, on he one is not 100%, and they tested him about an hour before the game. And Blake Brockemeyer has played a terrific football game. Had off-season surgery on both knees after the latest injuries. They said he'd be gone a month. He's back in two weeks and playing against one Bruce Smith. Bullline throws behind Carrier. Well, the reason why he throws behind is because he has to dance around in the pocket to try and avoid rushers. And when you do that, it just throws off all the timing of the routes. This is this is one time. I know you enjoy playing quarterback. Yep. But this is one time in a ball game that you don't want to play quarterback. <laughs> when they just tee off, they could care less about what you're doing or what you're looking at. But more importantly you. than that, you look at the scoreboard. That's why I don't want to be out there at this time. <laughs> oh, they moved again. Movement by David's Garrido. And you can understand the lack of concentration that's going on right now at this point. Yeah. Well, they call it on Garcia, the left guard, but David's Garrido obviously moved as well. Oh, take a choice. Take a choice. Nightmare is correct. Oh, and seven from a team that was in the NFC Championship game two years ago. Burline to carry it. Mark Carrier inside the 15-yard line. That time Steve Berline had just a little bit of time to be able to drop back in a pocket, set, and throw the football. Berline, as he comes back, you know they're going to be rushing at least four. Line does a good job. He steps up and is able to make a throw that Carrier is able to get his hands on. And then turns it on down the sidelines, gets as far as he can before he gets run out of bounds. Burline tried to draw Buffalo offside. Let's see if somebody moved early. They All did. Start, number 64, five yards, still first down. You know, we always talk about the home field advantage in the NFL. They had an 8 0 record in 96. They were invincible here at Erickson Stadium. Since then, they are 2 and 9 at home. That's not taking advantage. 2 and 9, including tonight, of course. Carrier again and got out of bounds at the 15. I mean, that was actually coverage by Eric Smedley. <laughs> you can't cover any better than that. Eric Smedley is number 40. Look at this coverage here. And that, I mean, he's there. Great catch, good throw. Every one of these receivers catches the ball with their hands. They really, really work on 
getting themselves in a position to make a play with their hands. That was Dwight. Dwight Stone, the former Steeler. Burline continues to run the hurry up as we go inside four minutes. Another four wide receiver set. Burline flushed. And throws it away. Carrier, the closest one to it. Kevin Green is looking up at that, that scoreboard. He's looking up at the clock. He had six sacks in a row coming in for just this season. Had a chance at 10. Three from last consecutive games we're talking about. Six sacks in consecutive games this year. Three last year. He had a chance to go to 10 and just look at the clock knowing to score. When Buffalo gets the ball, they're going to run. Simon Fletcher was a guy that had the record 10 games in a row with a sack, and he did it twice. Never went to the Pro Bowl. Burline with a pump fake. Muhammad Smith got a hand on it. But like Thomas Smith all night has been so close to being able to make plays. And I, you know, you, you hate to keep harping on a point, but Thomas Smith does not have a hand in a cast. Doug Evans is this type of a corner. He's a big guy. Now watch him. Just in a second. Looks up. As soon as he reaches his hand up, he pulls that right arm away so that he can't make a play on the ball. If you can't get to the ball, get this the receiver's hands away or arm away as quickly as you can. Doug Evans can't do that with a cast on his hand. Third down. Ball. Carry a touchdown. Steve Berline just keeps the play alive, as do the receivers. And Wade Phillips says, hey, you know, we can't let him have it at the end like this. You never know when points are, are so valuable. He scrambles around, pumps once, then sets and throws Carrier again, reaches up and snatches the ball in the end zone. Casey for the point after. He's got it. <laughs> 30 to 14. Buffalo over the Panthers. These overhead shots provided by the Southwest Airlines Aerial Cam high above Eric Stadium, Erickson Stadium for ESPN's Sunday Night Football. Carolina preparing for the onside kick. Loose. And they got it. Kenan Tatum. A back up linebacker gets the loose ball you know on an onside kick when you're the kicking team and you know you don't have a chance at the ball you go down and you wipe out any white shirt that you can see and wipe out is the perfect phrase exactly you watch these guys they go down there's some of them that can't get the ball look at them they just wipe out people Michael Bates actually has a shot at this ball in the air it did cross 10 yards. Tatum makes a nice recovery on the ball on the ground. Carolina takes over at its own 40. Two touchdowns, two two-point conversions. Who knows? Caroline hit as he throws. And boy, Anthony Johnson had Perry all over him, and it's going to get a flag in the secondary. And now Bruce Smith is upset. It looked like Johnson was being held downfield by Marlo Perry. Mugged, I think, might have been a better description. I just, first of all, I can't. There, number 58 of the defense. Perry. Automatic first down. I can't believe that Berline gets the ball out. No, he looked like he was being swallowed by that rush. Well, look at Berline. Look at the people that are around. Berline, and they're on his back. Bruce Smith is in front of him, and he still gets the ball away. Automatic first down at the Buffalo 47. Stone couldn't hold it. On his fingertips. Holy cow, what a throw. And that's really only the second time that they've gone down the field all night, but 
you know, and it comes at a time when you say, well, the score seems to be out of hand. Any time is fine. There goes the move, the outside receiver, number 80, Stone. He just accelerates. Now watch at the end. Just can't quite catch up to it. You can't throw a ball any better than that. Let him extend, tries to catch the back end of it, couldn't quite hold on. Second and 10 for Carolina. Burline with all day to throw. Carrier couldn't hold on, and Greer reached in, got a hand on it, wouldn't let him catch it. Well, I just love the way Carrier reaches up and goes after the ball. He does not allow the ball to get to him. He goes out and attacks the ball when he tries to catch it. I'll tell you, another guy you've got to give an awful lot of credit to is Burline. He has taken a beating. <laughs> they are just nailing him. There he is again getting pounded. Watch this. He reaches out, makes the catch. Or what we thought was a catch. Now third and ten. Pressure again. And they got him this time. The sack goes to Sean Price, who's coming back off the knee injury. Talk about old quarterbacks, and I do mean old. <laughs> they want to trade a seven for a seven. I don't think so. I appreciate it, but I don't think so. Pre-game show Sunday, NFL countdown every week at 11 a.m. Eastern. Join Chris Berman and the faculty at Bristol University for the only two-hour pre-game show in football. Then at 7.30, all the highlights on prior time. He knows nothing. He sees nothing. You did get to keep that cap, didn't you? Yep. For golf, you see next time we play golf. That was a beauty. <laughs> well, you'll just, you know, you'll have to live with it for about four hours on a golf course. Which, obviously, they're in four-down territory. They'll go for it on fourth and 13 here. First two passes in this series, one was nearly a 45-yard completion, the other nearly a completion for the first down over the middle. Some of the fans still hanging around. Burlow needs 13, gets it to Carrier, and Carrier not only makes the catch, then he gets out of bounds. Heck of a play. You know, Mike, you talked about the, you know, over the last couple of years, one of the problems that they had with this football team was they let Carrier go a year ago. Now they brought him back. But well, I'll tell you one thing that they, they defined tonight is their offensive line is blocking on passes. Watch Brockemeyer, 78, still fighting Bruce Smith, knowing that it's, it's a straight pass rush, but he gets him to the outside. Carrier continues to work. He was somebody they let go and brought back. They wanted to get rid of their wide receivers, bring in some youth and speed, and I think that was the beginning of the problems that they had on offense. Five ca catches, 100 yards for Carrier. The Rocket can't hold it. Is it intercepted? It is. Picked off in the end zone by Ray Jackson on the tip. Burline thought he had a touchdown. Instead, it's a pick. Manny Martin does a fabulous job of getting there and keeping the ball alive so that Jackson can wind up making the play. You see Jackson up against the rocket. Now, he's trailing him. Watch from the left part of your screen. That's Manny Martin who comes in. What a terrific job by Jackson picking it off the, his shoe tops. Burline tries to get this thing in. Martin tips it up. Jackson puts it away. Now only 2.51 to go. And a steady dose of Jonathan Linton coming. The tailback. Carolina has just used its second timeout. In the turnover margin, negative one in 19 since 1995. That just shows you again the value of the turnovers. And tonight, minus two, that will take them to one and 20. 
It's one of the things that Dom Caper stresses on his football team. We have to protect the ball. They don't have big play people on this offense. So it's, an, it's a team that relies on its defense to play solid, its offense not to turn the ball over, and if they need so to have their kicker win it at the end. And they just have not been able to protect the ball to be able to win games at any time. Steve Berline's face says it all, doesn't it? He is a warrior. I'll tell you what, he, he played a heck of a football game. That And again, I'm going back one more time. That, their offensive line, Carolina, did a great job. Linton has the first down and more out to the 38-yard line. Damian Richardson make the tackle. And well, speaking of offensive lines, as you pointed out earlier, Buffalo's offensive line was roundly criticized when the season started. For whatever reason, whether the criticism was valid or not, they have really come together, and they are can now be seen as one of the strengths of this team. Well, they, they really are. In Carl Mock again is the is the offensive line coach, and he's the guy to put them together. But it stemmed all the way back to last year when when they were terrible, and they really were terrible. Now it took them a little while to put it together, but they now have a pretty good offensive line. And one guy who can make up for some of their mistakes, not only Carl Mock but Doug Flutie. You change your oil every 3,000 miles, right? So I look at the record-tying day in Denver and our Sunday conversation with the new man in Dodger Blue, Davey Johnson. Join me, Kenny Main, and Dan Patrick after tackle football. Bills on top 30 to 14, heading for their fourth consecutive victory. And the Panthers heading for their seventh straight loss. Two minutes left. Linton again. For up-to-date scores, stats, and analysis on all of the NFL action, log on to ESPN.com and log on to NFL.com, where for the first time you can vote via the Internet to help select the 1999 Pro Bowl team. What a great job by Brocker Meyer. Bad knee and all back two weeks early. And he really shut down one of the legends of the game, Bruce Smith. One sixteen and counting for the Bills. Linton again. You know, my Doug Flutie does so many little things that make him a special quarterback. Just the simple thing of taking a snap, for example. Watch the pressure on his hand. As he moves his foot forward, which a lot of people do, you see how he stays in constant contact with the center, but look at the job that the center does, bringing the ball up, and it's perfect. The laces are perfect right there on his hand so he doesn't have to spin it around and make a throw. Dusty those, Ziegler, the center. Those are just the little things that I think make him a very special quarterback. I'm so happy and thrilled to see Doug Flutie being given the opportunity and a lot of credit has to go to A.J. Smith of the Buffalo Bills who's their personnel director pro personal director he believed in Doug Flutie and it's really paid off so far this year Flutie has had fewer drives more touchdowns and more points than his counterpart at quarterback Rob Johnson <laughs> gave this Rob Johnson thing a lot aren't you? Not me. <laughs> I'll tell you, in about a week, it's fixing to get really alive. Yep. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Linton again on third and six. I liked what Doug Flutie had to say regarding his role on this football team. He said that now what I've been able to do is give Rob Johnson a chance to take the full time he needs to heal and come back 100% healthy and be ready to lead this football team. He really understands what he has to do for this football team. Well, he only signed for $225,000. He got a $50,000 bonus. He gave half of that away as a charitable deduction. To the Jim Kelly Foundation for right. his son. And, and the other half he established um, the foundation for his son Dougie Jr. I mean the team mascot gets 50 grand to sign doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that might be his next role. <laughs> Doug Flutie uh, again having a stellar night. 
just the little things that he does. There he is throwing the ball down the field. Yeah, a little bit of luck never hurts. But then again, you can throw it end over end. Whoever said you had to throw a spiral? Then again, if you do throw a spiral, it can be a long touchdown. And why not just add a little jump pass to your repertoire? And, you know, Wade Phillips just sort of shakes his head and said, you know, the guy is really something. He is truly magical. And with those fluty flakes, he has uh, created the first black market in breakfast cereal. <laughs> you can't find a box. <laughs> we have them. Paul and I got ours. I'm anxious to try it, aren't you, Paul? Oh, I can't wait. That's a souvenir, folks. <laughs> oh, then, then I won't touch him. Career high, 282 yards, 23 seconds to go. Moore will punt it away. This thing is a rocket. Oliver brought down at the 16-yard line with only 12 seconds to go in the game. A 51-yard punt, a 9-yard return. What a turnaround for Wade Phillips from 0-3 to 4-3, tied for second in the AFC East with a chance to play the leader next week. And for the Carolina Panthers, you know, you got Wade Phillips and Doug Flutie enjoying a victory, but for the Carolina Panthers, what does Dom Capers now try and say to his football team? He has to rely on the character of the people that he's added to this football team to get them ready to play next week and the week after that. throws and the rocket doing his job to the very end makes the catch and gets out of bounds so they've got another play and that's right folks number 78 Bruce Smith is still on the field trying to get his first sack of the evening you know what's amazing about Smith with those 157 and a half career sacks he has never led the NFL I just find that remarkable I'll tell you he's been hustling all night long and he's had a tough job Rocker Meyer has done a great job. Bruce has never stopped hustling. Well, what do you have, 19 that year that Gastineau had uh, 22. 22 or 19 or 25? Or Derek Thomas had 20. I mean, they, you know, he's always sort of been the guy, no matter what he does, it hasn't quite been there. But he will be one of the all-time greats to play that position. Burline throws the catch made by Muhammad down to the 38-yard line, and that will do it. Our final score, Buffalo 30, Carolina 14. Coming up next, Sports Center. Dan Patrick and Kenny Mayne with a complete wrap-up of the day in sports. For Joe Deisman, Paul McGuire, Solomon Wilcox, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from Carolina. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League. We're coming full speed on Sports Center. It's your Sunday football field of dreams. A title game in that kind and a lot of this type. Ooh. Will Terrell Davis run the Broncos to a 7-0 start? Can the Vikings hang on to their dream season, or will Barry provide a wake-up call? Find out if Jerry Rice can catch a piece of history, and while you're here, you might as well have some Favre, too. Why does Jason Elam have 63 reasons to celebrate? These refs don't have one. Our dreams will leave you spinning. Oh. And sometimes frustrated. No good we got right. We've got to win. Does Chicago have enough fire to bring down the D.C. dynasty? Can Jeff Gordon lock up the Winston Cup championship? It's not how fast you get there, but how you get there. Don't lose your head, but do get carried away for Sports Center. It's next. Greetings. Welcome to Sports Center. Surgically attached to Kenny Mayne. I'm Dan Patrick. It's a good thing. At this point, Jeff Gordon's car would have to be stolen for him to lose the title. The MLS has a champion. Is it a new one? And what lengths did the Broncos go to in order to beat Jacksonville? Denver bringing out the motivational tools, trying to stay perfect. The Broncos will always remember January 25th, 1998, the date of their Super Bowl triumph over the Packers. The Broncos will never forget January 4th, 1997, the date of their playoff loss to the Jaguars. Are you surprised? Was some of the national media surprised by the fact that uh, this Buffalo Bills team is certainly much better than it was four <laughs> weeks ago? <laughs> 
I'll tell you right now, as Doug Flutie signs a box of Flutie flakes for everybody <laughs> right here. Uh, I, I'm telling you right now that uh, I think right now the uh, Doug Flutie mania uh, and the Buffalo Bills have really changed the perception of this team across the United States. And people, I think, now are really going to have to take notice of this team uh, just because they have won four straight. Okay, people are going to say, okay, they beat the Indianapolis Colts. Okay, they beat the Carolina Panthers. But then you have to look at it, and they beat the San Francisco 49ers, who are undefeated. They beat the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are undefeated, as part of this four-game winning streak. This club right now is headed in the right direction, and they have entirely turned their season around. There is no question about it. I think people nationwide, they really know that. All right, Jim, thanks very much. Get into that locker room, and uh, we'll check back in uh, just a few minutes or so from uh, Erickson Stadium. The Bills win it by a score of... Uh, 30 to 14, precious shot there by our, our photog. Absolutely, and they're always uh, the best in the business. I think we can uh, immediately open it up to the Let's phone go. calls. Let's go to Hartford, Connecticut, and Roy, welcome to the Buffalo Bills Honey Brown Lager Post Game Show. The Buffalo Bills go to battle, ready to fight. That's right, the Bills get the win tonight, 30 to 14. They beat the Carolina Panthers. Want to take you right out to Erickson Stadium in Charlotte. John Murphy standing by with a special guest. Go ahead, Murphy. All right, John, thanks very much. You can tell some Bills fans here hanging out, and uh, Bills played a good all-around game today. Got business done with a 30-14 to 14 win over Carolina. Joining us, one of the key players, made a key play, Bill safety Henry Jones. Henry, uh, obviously Carolina has some pretty dangerous receivers, but you guys did a good job of shutting them down tonight. Yeah, we knew coming in that uh, every game in the NFL is going to be a tough, hard battle, and you got to go out and earn your victories. That's one thing we did learn from Marv, so uh, they have some talent, and I think we, did, we rose to the occasion and stepped up and played a big game. Big play at the end of the first half, Carolina driving, and you came up with a, really a good athletic pick down in this end zone right over here. Can you talk about that play? Yeah, I mean, they were really driving the field, and somebody really needed to make a play, and uh, I, I happened to be the guy. I mean, it was a man-to-man -man coverage. Uh, brought the 10 yard line and he tried to get inside of me and I was able to adjust and make the pick so you know, it, was a, it was a really big play and you know they were driving somebody had to step up and I had to be the one you know if you guys wanted to play obviously you did want to play for first place to share first place next week you really had to take care of business here tonight and you did that didn't you? absolutely it's that time of the season where this is really starts to get to the grind it's the middle of the season uh, this was an, a road game against a non-divisional opponent we just had to come out and, and play get, play our game, play as hard as we can, and come out with a victory, and we did it. It was an all-around team effort tonight. Henry, thanks very much. Bill's right. safety, Henry Jones, with a key interception late in the first half. We're going to be back here in a moment to talk with another key member of the Buffalo secondary, Thomas Smith, but for now, we'll send it back to John Burton in the studio. Jack? All right, Murph, we'll do the highlights now. Doug Flutie, little man, big story since leading the Bills to a comeback winner of the Jaguars last week. The former Heisman Trophy winner has been the talk of the town. No, make that the nation. Flutie and the Bills looking for four wins in a row at Carolina. Rob Johnson, Wade Phillips looking on first quarter, first drive for the Bills. Flutie looking for Eric Moulds. Doug Evans has the interception, but he can't hang on. Moulds, great concentration and a great catch for the touchdown. Take another look. Moulds stays with it, makes the catch. 7-0 Bills. 10-0 Bills in the second. William Floyd gets in from the one-yard line, cuts the lead to 10-7. Later in the second, Flutie Cranking up the arm again, deep in his own end. Watch the beautiful rainbow to Eric Moulds as he beats Doug Evans. And Moulds is gone. 82 yards for the touchdown. Buffalo on top in this game, 17-7. Late in the second, Steve Berline. The play you just saw by the man you just heard from. Henry Jones, the pickoff in the end zone. 17-7 Bills at the half. In the third quarter, Flutie scrambling, running for a first down. He can do it all, folks. And Dom Capers... Just couldn't figure out what to do against Doug Flutie and the Bills. Led to a field goal, 27 Bills later in the third. Flutie scrambling, dumping it off to Thurman Thomas. Great play as he gets the first down inside the 20-yard line. Two plays later, Thurman on the handoff. Nice block from Joe Panos. Breaks a tackle, and he's gone. Touchdown, 18 yards. Bills win 30-14. to That is their fourth win in a row. They're now 4-3. and three. They've won four straight. Let's head back to Erickson Stadium now. I went to sports director John Murphy standing by with another special guest. John. Thanks, John. It's a big night for the defensive backs as the, the Bills really held Carolina in check. They only got 14 points. And joining us, cornerback Thomas Smith, who had a triumphant homecoming. And Thomas, uh, they, well, they're not afraid to go after you. They threw the ball to your side a few times. Uh, no doubt. Um, it was, very, it was a very exciting game. Um, all the DBs played well, um, including myself. And Yeah, they really came at me early, and, um, you know, I competed hard and 
made some plays on the ball, but uh, once again, it didn't get the interception, but played well, and we got the team win. You know, Carolina made a little run at the end there, but really you guys uh, got a good pass rush in contrast to some earlier games in fourth quarter when the teams got back into it. I thought the guys up front got a lot of good pressure on Burline tonight. Huh? Yes, I think the defense um, sucked it up. Um, we have been giving up a lot of yards um, in the fourth quarter, especially when the game was in hand, and you know, we sucked it up. The front um, came out the burn line and really got after them. And, you know, did a good job. Took a little pressure off us because early in the game, we were just running around out there. Hey, now, of course, the big game for first place next week in Orchard Park. The Dolphins come in. You get a share of first place if you can beat them. And, you know, your team did a defense anyway. Did a pretty good job against Miami back in week two. Yes, it's actually a very important game coming up. Um, battle for first. And, you know, we played well out there except for a couple series um, right before the half when they tied the game up. But... You know, we're at home now, and um, you know, this team is on the roll, and so we're just going to come in and play hard and compete and do the thing necessary to get in first place. Thanks, Thomas. Thank Thomas you. Smith of the Bills with a homecoming. He grew up nearby here and had all kinds of family here to watch the Bills win. 30-14, to 14, the Bills' fourth straight win, their longest win streak in just about two years. Incredible numbers for Doug Flutie again. 18 of 22, 282 yards passing, two touchdowns, one interception, and it's likely he'll start next week in that huge game against the Dolphins. Reporting live from Erickson Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm John Murphy. Let's send it back to John Burton. Let the quarterback controversy begin. In, Murph. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> you got a great job. The Bills no doubt keeping their eyes on today's game between the Dolphins and Patriots. The winner would earn sole possession of first uh, first place rather in the AFC East. I'm so excited I can't even talk. Dan Marino a tough day. Not much offense from either team today. This one of three interceptions thrown by Marino. Larry Wiggum making the pick right there for New England. Drew Bledsoe tough day as well. He was pressured and harassed and knocked around by the Miami defense all day. Battle of field goals we're in overtime. He gives you a problem. Uh, speaking from a defensive standpoint, he gives you a problem because if you keep him in the pocket, he can hurt you throwing the ball out of the pocket. If he gets out of the pocket on you, though, he, he can hurt you scrambling around throwing it. So, uh, you know, it's it's hard to know what to do against him. Is it truly a luxury to have uh, Flutie because you allow Rob to, you know? Well, it's great. Yeah, it's great to have. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's uh, I don't know if it's a luxury. It's great. It's great that we have Doug because. Uh, you know, I, I don't know where we'd have been. Uh, I think Alex would have done a good job, but certainly Doug's, you know, helped us win, if not been the player of the game in two of the three games at least. This is that the most complete game you played from start to finish in all phases? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we've had every game has been, you know, uh, less than seven points. So, I mean, this game, we, you know, we controlled more of the game overall. First drive was certainly big uh, to set the tone. and. Uh, um, you know, I, I just thought we played well overall. White injuries. Injuries, yeah. Um, Antoine Smith rolled his ankle. I, I, I think he could have come back in the game. Um, we played Jonathan Lennon, who we wanted to play anyway, and he did well. Um, Sam Rogers. Sam Rogers uh, pulled a hamstring, I think, so it may be a while on him. But uh, those are the only only injuries I know of right now. Well, you're going into a five-game stretch now against division opponents. Uh, going in with a four-game yeah. streak, that must feel good. Well, it feels good to, you know, to win the fourth one in a row and, uh, and you know, get out of the hole that we put ourselves in. And, and uh, you know, we're looking forward to the next one. Once it comes, we're going to enjoy this one, but uh, we're looking forward to the next one. Could you talk about your play as a whole of these last few weeks here? Well, we played, uh, you know, we played pretty well the first three games. You know, we lost two of them on the last play. And, um, you know, we, we we made a step up, though. We, we uh, the last four games, we've, We've continually gotten better, I think, and that's made a difference. Uh, we're able to win those other, the last three previous to this one, and then, and then this one was a, a real solid, solid game for us, especially on the road and, you know, Sunday night. And, and I thought, you know, I thought Carolina really, you know, they came out after us. So uh, I was impressed with them because they, you know, at 0-6, you, you could you could fold your tent, so to speak. But I, I didn't think they did. I think they really came after us. If Doug Flutie wasn't the story of the year, Eric Mole would have to be up there. He continues to get better. The first touchdown, <laughs> did you get a feeling that it was going to be your night when you made that play? <laughs> well, uh, of course, he set it up with a great catch and a great throw, too. Uh, Doug made a great throw, and he made a great catch. And uh, that set it up. And uh, Eric... Uh, Eric is continuing to play well. We're, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited for him because he, he does have talent. You can see the talent he has. Once he gets the football, he can run with it after he gets it. And, uh, and he seems to be catching the ball better and better all the time. His concentration seems to be better. So that's, that's helped us. Thank you. All right, Wade Phillips live in Charlotte, North Carolina. And our Stu Boyer there pumping him with those uh, 
good, tough questions. We'll be going back to Stu in just a little bit. Let's recap some of the highlights of that first half and the Bills getting off to the strong start led by, who else? Doug Flutie. Flutie to Eric Moles in the early going and Moles with a terrific catch goes out of bounds. That's a 31-yard gain. He beats Doug Evans trying to play with a broken hand. The Bills would take advantage of that. And then Flutie gets a little bit of a break. Hey, sometimes it's just as good to be lucky and good, and he does get the break here. It bounces off Evans. Moles catches it for the touchdown, 7-0 Bills. And there is a nice uh, grab right there. And again, uh, the Bills coming out on that first possession, which is always uh, very, very big, Adam. He gets a lucky break there in the touchdown, and uh, you take him any way you can get him, that's for sure. But I thought the most impressive part about that drive was the perfect placement of the football on the previous pass that we showed to Moles. I mean, you couldn't have made a better play on that, both in terms of...